regurgitation, yep. and that would happen when the ventricles would contract, the, either one of your AV valves would let blood pour back towards the atrium, or would get stenosis down when the ventricle contracts, it's pushing through a small opening of the AR or the pulmonary valve. Okay, so that's where we were going with murmurs and stuff. Because they really don't, they call functional in the sense that it sounds like it's a murmur because they're so thin wall. You can hear it because all the ones are shit. Back to it. So that would say it's the, it's the, she asked the rent of is pushing the blood through. Why do you hear them in children? One of them is it may not really be there. So thin wall, they're not so small, it's just the volume that's passing through it. All of us get to be nine, ten years old, there's no more murmur. They just don't go away. All right, so that's what they mean. They're probably really not a real murmur at that time, so they don't get that concerned. If they were, they're going to do echoes to the heart, even on a child, which is should. You know, a lot of things should be driven. Like every couple of years, full MRI scan should be done with people, and you'd see if something's developing or not. There's a diagnostic way of looking. MRI of breast is a hundred thousand times more diagnostic than the mammogram of the I think MRIs of the pelvis is much more diagnostic than the ultrasound of the pelvis. But they don't want to pay for it. It really comes down to they don't want to pay for it. More expensive testing. But if it's done more frequently, then you can lower the cost of it. Because the volume would be there to offset. So really. You just have a lot of diagnostic tools out there today that sometimes are only allowed to be used too late in the time. You know, a lot of times you get a patient and within a week, you know they have a disc. And still, the carriers will not let you order an MRI. You have to wait six to eight weeks. And then you do it, there it is. They bring you in this that the person needs surgery. They don't care. So that's the unfortunate part. So then we talked about what do we mean by systolic over diastolic. Systolic means what? And we're in our contracted phase of the heart, so pressure should be high. Diastole means we're in the relaxation phase of the heart, so pressure should be low. So today the standards have changed drastically. Where years ago it was 90 over 60 or 140 over 90. Well, the 90 over 60 still stands, but they don't want that pressure like 120 over 70. That's it. You have 120 over 80, oh, you're borderline. Oh, they really do. That's because of this life insurance company. Yeah. So it's all the new clauses. You die in 2 years, you get nothing. Not a way of solution. Right. But you follow what I'm saying? So are some of the standards real? Yeah. Well, the standards are being set up by the insurance industry and the pharmaceutical industry. You know, so in the insurance industry, the pharmaceutical industry. Other medical associations from outside the United States look back at us, that's what they come from. Yeah, especially um, the Australian one, they take the ABC1 network from there, really butchers the top medical association here in our pharmaceutical industry. But they've done a lot of investigating and studies on it, especially the status of the biggest one they've done. And over the history of time, there's not one true evidence proof that they prevent heart attack or stroke. But it's the biggest prescribed drug when it comes to treating cardiovascular. It's a multi billion, billion dollar industry since the late 50s. And why is cardiac still the number one killer? That's really worth it. Two have been yanked right off the market because they, the damage they were causing too much damage to the body, to the kidneys, to the liver. So, you know, so there's so much controversy. Remember, the FDA, the government doesn't have money anymore to fund the FDA. The FDA is funded now solely through contributions by the pharmaceutical industry. So just keep that in the back of your heads. I mean, the big time famous nurse practitioner or doctor, when the rep comes in to push the product on you, they're going to cause this the best. It's always the best. Same thing in the, in the vitamin industry. That's even more deadly. 
because it's not regulated at all. And, and vitamins can be as harmful as drugs if they're taken wrong. They interact with drugs. They interact with different diseases. But the untrained, you know, urban life and all this crap that's out there. You got uneducated people selling something that could kill somebody. Because of the pyramid effect. You're underground, you make a ton of money. And then, you know, I get all you to sell my product, and I'm making money just sitting home and counting. I mean, that's what happens in these industries. They become multi. Why are they multi billion dollar industries? Well, it's easy to push it. Something that's really worth, you don't have to push it and sell it itself. You know, then what, on any bottle of vitamins, what will it tell you? Not approved by, not approved by the FDA. Mm -hmm. not, not proven to prevent any of these things it says it's preventing. So why the hell am I taking it? I'm not talking about vitamin deficiencies, which are real. I'm talking about the prevention stuff. The best way to take it always in is in the whole food design. The body handles it the best. It's like juicing and all this other stuff. It's like, do you, would you eat 40 carrots at once? No, but why do you grind up 40 and drink it? That's not overloading your body with beta carotene and, and you know, vitamin A byproduct and everything, because it is. You don't need that. Like, kale, what's the kale thing? Oh, we're going to use kale. Well, you know. Because <laughs> it's kidney stones. You know, there's a lot of real dysfunction with it and stuff. So why, why do you need it? You need some of it? Yes. But spinach, kale, they're all the same family. The doc, we can eat. If you're a hypothyroid person on Synthroid, you can't have any of that stuff because you inhibit Synthroid from working. Doesn't work. You can't have soy either. Soy inhibits it. And soy, compared to animal protein, is a real foreign protein to your liver when it sees it. So they, 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 you know, the same thing away. These studies have been done in Europe. By, uh, this, in Italy, they did a big study on it, a 10 year time frame, having half the people, people take the same type, same age population, have red meat, lean red meat and chicken, and put these other people on vegetarian soy, their cholesterol stuff went through the roof compared to the people that were on, on the whole meat. Everything, just that standard, triglycerides that were worse than them than them. Why? A lot of carbohydrate background in, in, this, in, in a vegetarian diet. Any vegetable or fruit you stick in your mouth is carbohydrate in it. Sugar, sugar. Glucose is glucose when it gets into the bloodstream, you remember that. So, before you go on these band lines, keep your head moving. If we're on cardiac disease, well, cardiac disease is big in this country. Big, you know, big time. So, so we've done the heart and love. Let's go with the drinks in our blood. So, this diagram <laughs> here is kind of like what I drew on the board that day for you. You guys should be experts on this by now, I hope. Okay, so we start with superior meaning data, inferior meaning data, coronary science. And that's the other thing we do your practical. What interest do we have in the right atrium? Two things. Yeah. Two things that one of us going to be paying. What would it be? All the coronary science. Thank you. So why is it a mystery when you look there? Just a weird way to cut the part. It doesn't make a difference. A spiral weird cut is the right side you're looking at. A flat cut is the left side. So now you already know that. So you have to battle is half licked. If you know it belongs on the right side, you know it belongs on the left side, you should just blow right through it like not even think twice about it. So you can use flat cuts? Of course. Okay. So flat cut is the left side? Flat cut is the left side. I told you that. What are we looking for on the left side? The, the left atrium, left, left atrium, ventric, maybe the ventricles, oh, and, and the sharp. septum. You see it nice. Spiral cut, I see pulmonary, pulmonary valve, and I can see tricuspid valve. Out of every muscle, either side, you can. Photo tendage, regular cane. Don't make it rocket science, it's not. It's, it's just, this is probably, you know, yesterday morning's group did very well. Um, yes, they are. Yeah, let's, not, let's not put too much pressure on this. They're very bad. But they always do. You know, they're not the... 
I hate to say it, but the girls are messed up. I don't know what to say. Why do we leave? You can't be leaving. So let's trace our blood. So now from here we end up in our right atrium. From the right atrium, where should we go? The right through the, the uh, tricuspid valve. And where do I go when I go through the tricuspid valve? What type of valve is the tricuspid valve? A and B valve. Thank you. Because sometimes on a written test, you might get asked the question, name the left somebody on the valve. No. Stop 
For ten, now we're talking about valves. Are we talking about the myocardial wall or the valves? The walls are getting weaker. Because Thank you, because they're constantly putting against the force. So they hypertrophy. So you get a cardiomegaly, which is not a good cardiomegaly. Right? Because there is good cardiomegaly. Who has that? Athletes. Long distance runners, athletes. And then when they stop running and slowly work their way back down the hunt will go back to normal shape <coughs> without fatty infiltration. <laughs> so palpitations are very powerful. Why do we get palpitations? Uh, people annoying you. No, I mean with a hot huh? problem. Yeah. I get a palpitation. It's when it scoops of heat, right? Yeah. Well, so why one, one wall is like moving faster than the other. Well they're not being in sync, exactly. So one's under more stress than the other, so one might say, okay, why aren't you responding to me in the beats again? So you get these palpitations. And that happens a lot between the injury and the vegetables for people with, with uh, Because it's so common to see AFib with ventricular failure. Okay, it's a very common condition. Difficulty breathing, opportunity, weird breathing. Coffee, cough with a fart and spew. You hear people walking around, <laughs> If they're not having the semen, then they probably have this, or they probably have both. You can pick it right up. And then the extended neck veins. The jugglers are always engorged. Anything that's going to affect the heart from pushing blood the way it should will always descend. Why? So you have to build up the pressure. So the veins are going to dilate to adjust for that pressure. Wait, well, 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 Pushing. Uh-huh. He's getting perforated. <coughs> because you're fat, because you're all swollen and full. Well, they have to be able to extend and flex, right, to accommodate like the first punch. But what is the key to this? Volume is backing up, so volume is going back into the venous system instead of going forward to the anterior system. Volume of the blood. Not just pressure, volume of the blood. There, right? there is a volume there also. So pressure is rising because the volume is rising, not because of this pressure, you follow what I'm saying? So it backs up. And now if it's backing up, distending this, what is it doing down towards my liver and all my hepatic portal system? Same thing. Same thing. Engorging. It's engorging. You know, so it's engorging. So that's why the person is nauseous, doesn't feel like he have a difficulty breathing, and has a cough. Signs of symptoms like that, you're taking care of someone that you know has a history of cardiac, you better get their blood to the hospital. Or maybe in 12 hours they'll be going because they want to fill so much with fluid they'll drop. 12 hours I used to take that off. Depending on how bad they are. You know, because cardiac output keeps dropping in the people. So you'll see if you'll learn stroke volume is a constant. Output is it? You'll learn that physiology of Stalin's law. Is this in our notes or is this just something you promised? No, this is stuff I'm telling you. So you're going to write it down. Okay. Because if he chooses the heart, if I choose the heart on the final, one of your problems, this might be one way you can answer your question as a second part of it. Okay. Yeah. What this disease? How is it caused? And How is it caused? I want the and I'll say I want the pathogenesis of the disease. That means what it looks like. What would you see? Why is that happening to the person? How would you I'm trying to see if you know how to think instead of just memorizing vomit. Because if you just memorize and vomit, say goodbye to your nursing career. You're not going to get through the program. It's not designed like that. It's designed to make you think. Diagnostic questions are designed to make you think. Think about what you know, now apply it to it and all. And I want you to start doing that. You don't realize if you get into nursing programs, which you know, the majority of you are going to when you apply for the in August, next January, next year, it's you're with patients. So you're going to see this stuff. And we want you to see it and adapt to it and become good at it, not see it and screw up and leave it. So that's why I'm doing this with you. 
So that's why I play these diagnostic symptoms games with you, because you learn from this. It takes away the board of, oh, okay, the board just goes like this. Why is it going like this? Well, what happens if we don't do that? So let's bring some pathologies in to break up the boredom of just the basic boring, vomiting back anatomy, because that's all anatomy really is. It's a very boring subject. But if you don't bring in clinical anatomy, it stays very boring. And that's what I'm doing with you guys. My way to fizz. This way you, you, you'll find this stuff in physiology, you're not lost. And you'll really know it by the time you get through the two courses. And that's what I want. It's, it's great when you see, you know, students finally in their careers, and damn, they're good at it. That means I did my job. But when you guys leave here, if I can't make you think, I failed you this semester. I didn't help you. We, I failed. I screwed up. So I find making you think, in my eyes, is more important than the name of the course. I might have a solid B student, but they know how to apply this stuff, and they know how to use it. That student impresses me. A student means, yeah, they memorize well, and they can bomb it well. You know, so you get six A's out of a semester, out of a course. Three of them are probably A's that really have the whole thing. Three just memorize well, can cram. But my B range, they end up making great nurses, great doctors someday. So I'm just telling you something before you sell yourself short. Why would we have a functional murmur? Functional murmur means it's not a true murmur. It's not really damage to a valve. Why do you get these functional murmurs? Because it's too much volume. Too much, exactly. Too much volume. Good job. Too much volume. It can either backflow. It's mainly backflow volume of what you're getting. So you get this murmur. So you, you will get this. Okay, so that will happen to the person. Rowls in both lungs, that's wheezing. So you get the wheezing congestion in both lungs. So you, you know, the bronchioles are going to react against this. And ankle edema. And also, one other thing that could be added to this would be ascites. A-C-I-T-E-S. Ascites. A-C-I-T-E-S. And what's ascites mean? I'm very excited to know what ascites is. The swelling of the abdomen due to backing up our hepatic portal system. So that's what happens. That's what happens. You can do it. It's a game, Jay. Shut up. Isn't it happening? And the same usually happens with liver failure. Yes, it does. So when that starts happening, so mm -hmm. what I want you to realize, sometimes the person with this bad heart doesn't die from the heart, dies from kidney failure or Mostly. liver failure. Mostly it's, so what I want you to start thinking about, this becomes multi organ, when you see the term CHL, this is a multi-organ system film. It's not just one system. You're screwing up everything. Your two other key systems, your kidneys, and when we get to the kidney, we're going to see it. When you hypovolemic to the kidney, and there's all different ways of doing it. One is this way here, because we're not moving the volume of blood anymore. The kidney's going to work so hard to keep that GFR at a constant rate, but you're going to really play with that fit, the glomerular filtration rate. And it's going to do what it's going to do, spasm, it's going to tighten arteries, dilate arteries to keep this going. When you start playing with this constantly and screwing it up, now the filtration starts getting messed up, and it's not, you end up in renal failure. Exactly. It's like like a little bit shock, but this is a different way of doing it. We're always blowing it backwards into the venous structure instead of into the arterial. So we're backflowing against the filter. It's like blowing back against a filter. It doesn't work well when you do that, so you, you screw it all up. And this is just showing you the schematic and showing you the ascites abdomen. There you go. That's me. <laughs> I was going to put it on here to you. <laughs> but it's just showing you a schematic of it. So sometimes a picture is worth more than all the words. I've seen people with that. You see people look like this, right? <laughs> you put a tap in there. If you put a tap in there, belly button, beer would come out like so. <laughs> but is this, have you never seen this? Every day. Every day. What I want you to realize is that, and now look at the chest x ray of congestive heart failure. Look at that left ventricle. The, the heart should take up one third. Third lungs, third heart, third. Heart's taking up most of the space. He ate a small human. <laughs> is that like. End or is that like the beginning? No, this would be probably 
some of that's the mid phase of real severe CHF. Because they always do chest x ray, right? Do you have a chest x ray of somebody that just died of one? No, I'm not dead yet. Because the diaphragm isn't working. So why is it so, so big? Because, because it's, it's hypertrophy, it's cardiomegalia. It's just sagging. It's just a sagging big heart. It's but a big why, broken heart. Because the ventricle walls are thickened to push the blood. So what happens with someone that exercises, the ventricle wall thickens out, outside. So the chamber stays the same size. Some people with cardiomegaly do this, not only is it thickening this way, it's thickening internally too, cutting down the size of the chamber. So some of these chambers, if you autopsy these people, instead of it being a certain volume, it's half the volume it should be. So that heart is working so hard. And what's really working on is the atrium. So they go into AFib. You watch it. Put EKG on them, you'll see the ventricles are beating one way, and the, and the atrium are beating like 120, 130 beats trying to come on and fire. You're not firing fast enough for me. Because you can't. Like you said, it's tired, it's worn out. AFib sucks. It does. You get that. But yeah, I have AFib. We always knew we were fit with it. I don't. So because of the, like, the walls like the walls get thick and then the heart gets thick, there's not enough like space in between, pretty much, to exactly. have it. You're hitting it right on the head. Okay. So right-sided would be more up because of those problems with your lungs back into the to the heart. Left side is because the pressure in the system is too high back into the so people with problems like emphysema and stuff, they'll develop more of a right side than the first, then they'll become left as time goes on. People that are just hypertensive and stuff will stop left side first. So there's this way, there's right sided heart failure, there's left sided heart failure. And there's different, a different parent you're going to see. Someone with right sided heart failure, their first early symptoms, they can't breathe. They're filling with fluid at a fast rate. They don't get the distension right away, um, like, like someone with left sided heart failure. So there's a variation between the rest of you get the whole bundle comes in, but in the early signs of it. Their early, early sign might be a little nauseousness and they can't breathe in their lungs. It's not like bring up fluid. And they're backing up into the lungs. So that's that type. So then we get, there's your pulmonary root, systemic root, yay. And then we get into the two nerves controlling our heart. Now the heart is what? What type of cardiac muscle has its own autocentric beating system? It doesn't depend on what? Well, because of the cardiac disc, you can constantly move calcium channels to it. So by you being that way, if you were to take a piece of cardiac tissue out of a live person and put it in a petri dish, it would stay even. Skeletal muscle, no, and smooth muscle, not really. It needs to be stimulated by a new fire. But cardiac muscle, no. So why do we put nerves to it? It's for electrical signals. No. No, yes, but why? So what? Big things, one simple thing. It needs to adjust to the body's surroundings. Yeah, but that's a lot telling me this. Well, like coordinates right. it, coordinates the atrium and the ventricle. That doesn't know the body surroundings. That's huge with the body surroundings. But just why are we putting an electrical system to the heart? Coordinate it, because the atrium beat in one, and the ventricle's beat in another beat. Ventricles normally like to beat at 45 to 55. The atrium likes to beat 60 to 90. So they're not in sync. How do we sync it? By having one thing here and one thing here that powers that one to push those ventricles faster to beat with my atrium. We're going to show you that in a second. Yes. Can I ask a stupid question? Maybe. Oh, trust me, I can. Um, so you said if you took a piece of tissue out of the PPA. Yes. So, like, hypothetically, if you took the whole heart out? There would be. The yeah. lion used to do that. Did you ever see it on the History Channel when the lions would sacrifice the virgins to the sun? I just watched it in the show. They would take it. They would, they would, so the best thing would not to be a virgin back then. <laughs> they would take it to the top of the mountain and they'd rip her chest. They'd 
come right to our chest and rip the heart right out of them, and the heart would beat, and they pull up to the Son of God to worship. So I'm glad you made me laugh when we were listening to these people when the world was ending. So you believe you put a heart to a God, that's going to stop things from happening. Come on. You just need something to talk about. So now looking at this picture, then I'll answer your question. We have different nodes. We have the pacemaker of the heart with the sinoarterial node. Now this is more physiology than that because physically you can't see the wiring system in the heart, but it's there. We go from here to the intraventricular node, which then will come down to the bundle branches, the bundle of his, and then to the Pekinji fibers. Those are the even firing into what? Papillary muscles. So all this has to sink together. Why would I put a pacemaker in you? To keep it in sync. To keep it in sync, because these two things are not beating together. So you keep going into the eighth of the event, and then we take your overall ventricular output, and you're pumping blood in maybe 40 beats a minute. That's not enough to sustain you. You walk up a flight of stairs, it still stays 40 beats, it doesn't react. Because the wiring system got damaged somehow. How can we damage it? Well, maybe you had a heart attack to damage it. Now, can you see how maybe a mild heart attack can create a valve problem? Now you can because we damage this. Say I suffer an infarct that goes in and wipes out this part of my heart. We have a mild white and it wipes out that. Look at this femoral muscle's not working anymore. When you say wipes out. Wipes out means it dies. Yep, when you have a heart attack. The your tissue heart dies. That tissue takes a lifetime to regenerate. So it doesn't really regenerate. It regenerates in such a, they thought it did, but they realized it does, but it's so slow. Now maybe with stem cell work in the future, can we, can we go in and inject in there? Yeah. Probably in like 20 years, how will we treat it differently? 30 million. So, huh? 30 million. 30 million? They're already 30 million. No, I know, but I'm saying before, before the FDA says it's okay. Yeah, it's not. That's the one. When I say these nuns, I understand they're already doing it. In China, you know, Dr. Lazar was, was here that time a few years ago. He was a big stem cell doctor. He's all over the world now. They hired him out. It's a huge clinic out in Sweden. So he works with him in California. He's doing it with the, the uh, retina of the eye, regenerating that. And it's working. But healthcare is okay for him. Oh, it's Carolina? Yeah. Really? Really. That's cool. Oh. Macular degeneration is curing with stem cells. But if you can do that, you can do this. You can do it anyway. You follow what I'm saying? So someday you will see the change in your health fields. The way we're treating disease today will not be treated that way in 15, 10 to 15 years. It'll change. Even cancers will change. They're using gene therapy, stem cell therapy to treat. And chemotherapy will be a thing that might double back and say, what are we doing by now? They're even stupid. But they're still using the same barbaric way of treating it from 60 years ago. It's not working. And they admitted that. Like they, they, they admitted that on national TV, like in the top three of cancer researchers in the, in the world, with two others from Dana Farber and the hospital in Texas, they were on Good Morning America when they were talking. And they literally said, We failed you when it comes to treating cancer. For 40 to 50 years, we've been still treating you like prehistoric dinosaurs. We target it, we cut it, we chemo it. That was the whole wrong approach from day one. They didn't have technology. Back no, that's so now they do. Well, then the government goes against it. Oh, no. So there you go. It's so, all about what, what, your question, Mom. So on the intervention of the heart, the previous slide, you're talking about the parasympathetic. And so, yeah, we want to speed it up, we want to slow it down. That's to adapt to the body. Which you well, said. So you were right with that. I was just looking at the heart. Right. So I'm not saying you're wrong, I just want to answer this first. Well, I just wanted to ask, like, what's going on um, in the body? Like, say you stand up as a fast. All right. How about you stand up real fast, and you get postural orthostatic hypotension? What does that mean by me saying that? You get dizzy. Postural orthostatic hypotension. You get dizzy. Because not only did you get up here, means your blood pressure drops. Your blood pressure can't rise fast enough as your body moves. And, and, and some people have this condition. 
And it's really good if they're near stairs and they do that, so they can tumble all the way down, right? It's one way to control population. But the other thing is, but there's one response. What you're saying, so what's happening here, the sympathetic doesn't react quick enough to adapt the heart to keep the pressure even as the person rises, so there's a sudden response. Okay? So there are conditions that affect that. If you're a normal person, in theory, that should not happen. This is why some people get, you know, dizzy easier than other people, get, get, you know, without some shifts or sudden shifts in their body positioning. They can't take it. That's why not everybody can be a fighter pilot or an astronaut because they put you through this type of training, and then eventually the body can adapt itself. If your body can't adapt, you can't do this. So if the plane goes into a spiral, you're going to go unconscious instead of stay conscious to get it out of that spiral. So you follow what I'm saying? So Yes, not everybody will use the same, but you're 100 percent right. The power sympathetic and sympathetic is going to keep balancing back and forth with this heart. And that goes on constantly. So it's the sympathetic that would speed it up. Yes, and the power would slow it down. So good? Can I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. okay. But the physiology will totally answer that for you. Because you're going to move into the pathways, you're going to show ECG tracings, and then you're going to put the electrical pathway over it of what the nerves are going to the heart and see all this at the myocardial junction. So you'll learn all this stuff. This will make a lot more sense. The only reason I'm showing you this, when they talk about bundle branch blocks, that is not a vascular situation. It is a nerve situation. And there's a little piece of boom that they have, it's a hot block home. And this will help you with physiology, this hot block home, is that when, <laughs> when the heart is found from B, you have a first degree block. So it keeps spacing itself. Instead of being certain distance from one another, P in the R way, because P is what? Atrial contraction, ventricular contraction, ventricular depolarization. That's what this means, looking at this thing. So this bubble right here is talking about our ventricles. This is talking about my atria. So if this keeps lengthening, there's like a time frame problem between the SA and the AV node. But it's minor. We don't have to do much with this, watch it meds so you can speed it up a bit. Now we start getting into second degree, there's two types of second degree. It gets longer and longer and longer and then it drops. It doesn't even happen. It doesn't even happen. So in that case, it's starting to get a little worse. Now some piece don't even get through anymore. So you start looking at a tracing, it's like things are missing. Then what happens here, nothing is beating together in the third degree. So when you start getting from this point here, this is what a pacemaker has to be put in. There's no if, ands, or buff. They gotta be wide in the heart. And you'll have specialists that are known as cardiophysiologist specialists that just deal with reading the impulse of the heart. And they're the ones who make the decision to pacemaker. You know, they do exist, there's not many, like two or three in the whole state. It's very hard the way carriers pay back to these guys that they A lot of doctors leave Rhode Island because they're the lowest paying state in the country for those based on regions to get paid. Well, we only have one little city. Right? Medicare pays terrible here compared to Massachusetts or Connecticut. So doctors who license in both states and cross the line and have an office in Mass just to get an increase in Medicare payback. So there's a big difference. Florida and California are always big, they pay you well. People in my own field who wouldn't make today, they were making back in 1980 for Medicare payback. So these guys are retired after 20 years because they made enough money for the system. And then they live it. So that's why certain doctors are not here anymore. So there's three degrees of block. When you start getting into, into a 2B to a 3, you have to pace it. Or you're going to, they're not going to live. There's just too much problem where the atrium and the ventral are just not beating it all together. And what happens? They're not moving blood. So when you hear hot block, that's usually an electrical problem. Could have been due to a previous heart attack, of course. But it's not like an MI. That's different. So, 
Now we look at the circulation of the heart, unless it's the same trace. Let's go look at the circulation of the heart and our coronaries. We always say that the anterior interventricular artery is our widow artery because it really will wipe out most of our, we include here, say goodbye to most of your left ventricle. So that's the widow artery. That one includes badly, but not the wrong one. Make sure the light is showing this B. And this is showing you bypass surgery, stenting, and so forth to fix it. Hopefully we don't suffer that much damage. So a schematic of what a myocardial infarction is, well, this thing is clotting and closing up this artery, and look at all this tissue dying. And look at it dying. I mean, possibly, you know, this is young, these animals really are old that we have that we use for hearts, so they're fine. But if we had true cadaver labs where you dissected humans, you would see all these pathologies. Because people die of something. There's no kill people using the specimens. Mm -hmm. Well, they do in China, but I hear. But, you know, that's why there's a lot of controversy with that. Well, no, about cats? No. Oh, yeah. oh. That's why there's controversy with that that went around that uh, anatomy that was the, the living visual anatomy, the one that travels the country. Oh, yes. yes. Right. Because yeah. there is a lot of young people in there. <clears throat> they're, all, they're all Asian. So they think. Oh, really? Yes. There were prisoners that came out of China that they were put to death to use them for this. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's no human rights. No. no rights for anyone. Unless <laughs> you're <laughs> sure the other one, and you have all the rights in the world. It's kind of like you should teach it. You have the rights, you have enough money. Do they put the balloon in and then blow it up? They'll try that. If that doesn't work, then they'll go in and do true bypass surgery. Now, a robotic surgeon, do like a double bypass, they can do it. They don't have to crack the chest. It's not getting to quadruple, then no, they're going to crack the chest. But, you know, so a bypass surgery, it's just a one inch. A one inch is cut, and the robotic arms go in and do what they have to do, and the person is up and walking around a half hour after the surgery, and come the same way. So there's no media because you know, they cut to the, you know, cut you open like a dead fish, and crack the chest and break the ribs and pull everything open so I can get the heart out. And it was amazing. When they did surgery like this on people, and they die. They don't even close them up. When you get these bodies in as a, as a, as an undertaker and a mama, I mean, you, you take the sheets off and there's the heart sticking out, the chest wide open, and you're gonna put all this back, push the heart back in and close them all up. They don't do anything. They just, they they just leave them that way. They sheet over. The sheet over and they send them out. They don't close them. If someone's dying, they'll close fast to save the surgery with success. And they die after the surgery. And success. So when you have bypass, is that the only thing that they bypass is those coronary arteries? Right, the ones that were damaged. So they would bypass this. You know, try to, you know, take it and move down here to see if we can keep whatever we can alive. When you well, say you bypass, what is that mean? The picture I showed you. <coughs> That's not normal. So they'll graft out of other smaller arteries, take it, they graft it here. So. This is, they're moving right off the aorta here because this coronary coming off the aorta is not working right anymore because it's a clue. So they bypass. And they get those veins from the arteries from the Yeah, they take them from there. There's no areas they'll get them from depending on how good they are. And then that's the balloon technique. That's the balloon technique. That like that's the stent. They go with the stent and they dilate. And then they'll keep the stent there. They pull that out and the stent stays there to keep the artery open. That's kind of how they deal with aneurysms too. Sense. I don't know. My daughter in law, she specializes in selling. She makes like 300000 a year working 10 hours a week selling these. And my son is the regional manager of, of uh, the Da Vinci Robot, which is an intuitive medical. And he makes about 700000 a year. They make more than the doctors that are using the technology. Is he single or low? No, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. So, like you said, I think more than the surgeons we train. They work long hours. I mean, they will stop five in the morning for midnight, six days a week, travel along the country. Right? 
know, they call them sometimes and they say, oh, I'm just going for a meeting that I'm down in Texas, so I'm here. But, you know, so they work hard and they can play hard because they make the money to play hard. You know, but there's big money. And anyone who bought a copy is still allowed in the United States. You've got the Titan coming in with a smaller robot coming out of Canada, but the FDA is giving them a hard time, even though Columbia Medical School is using it solely as their robotic teaching now to their surgeons. And that's designed to go in and do like adenomas in the brain, adenoma, you know, a smaller robot to get into tight areas, but this robot's not designed to do that. <clears throat> so, you know, that one is the one I, you know, bought stock in thinking it'll be the next Microsoft, and it goes, <laughs> just like a present, a new inhalable insulin. That's going no way either. Pharmaceutical industry buys into it and they kill it. So then your stock dies with it. So there you go. So no, have to keep working. Not happening. So if we look at this, but just showing you a true MI, and this one shows it even better. They took it out. This is you know autopsy, and this is all dead tissue. And literally, you would see. It's like if somebody bit a hole right in the wall, like the tissue mass just shrivels and stuff. It looks like somebody bit the heart, you know, so it's a scandalism, the source of the myocardial. So there you go. So this person died of a myocardial There's their heart. So if we had these to look at, what you would if you're in med school and stuff, you would see these things. Because you actually would be dab is you see what they die. What do we get to uh, My first cadaver was she the woman had all synthetic artery from the whole abdominal aorta out to the common iliacs were all synthetic. She must have had huge aneurysms. Then she had a patient. So she had a single vascular accident, you know that. And you went in the brain and you saw the hemorrhage. So <clears throat> that was a body that we were lucky enough to have. Then this is what you see on, you see depressed, T, the T waves depressed. So it doesn't. Should be because why it can't be polarized now, it's damaged. And then after when it heals, it re rises above the wall because it worked so hard to be polarized. So you see this on traces. Sometimes you just think it makes it three yards and it's normal. <laughs> you see the green, it's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a way to tell if you've ever had like a small heart attack? Yeah, by changes on changes on the EKG when they stress the baseline. when they stress, but you have to have a baseline. So a lot of them get missed, and all it comes back and bites you when you're like 78 years old, and that you have real severe heart problems. And I knew the group I was in, their dad was a big time doctor. He died at 78, and that's what happened to him. They said he probably had a flu that got into your heart and damaged it when you were in your like early 60s. And went aware of it, and now it's coming back, and it's not just for just a cause of failure to no, yeah, to no extent on. And they couldn't do nothing, nothing they could do for them. Just started morphing them, let them die. It was awful. There was a person that was fit, took care of himself, everything. <laughs> died. So, enjoy your life. <laughs> the one here to focus on is this one here, this coactation of. That's the one. This will come back when we do fetal circulation. But this one here, the Charlesy of, which, which means four things are wrong with not. The Charlesy of Shalom. This is the one that is the true blue baby syndrome. Baby would be blue, and dark blue. And because the heart's not working right at all. You have four major defects. Tetra means four. So the pulmonary trunk is too narrow. So you have a trace of that pulmonary trunk is to those pulmonary valves. There's so much strain pushing against it. Then resulting hypertrophic right ventricle, look, sticking. Not only do we have a ventricular septal defect, we have the ventricle pours out through both openings. So there's massive problems with this person. Just for reference, uh, when it says figure 19.18, this is out of our book in chapter 19, correct? Correct. All right, thank you. And that would be C, 18. C, so be the third picture. I need glasses. So yes, when you see a number up there, that means chapter 19, figure 18. Yes. 
And I don't know this because this, you know, just in case you ever get asked about fetal circulation you want to get into, and the different diseases of the fetus, that's one of them. Are you gonna, what are you going to let us know which one you're choosing? I'm not going to. You want us to know every single disease in the room of the heart. So you are choosing heart. I'm choosing heart. But I'm not telling you adult heart or baby heart. That's just bullshit. I said that out loud. You will get a study guide. It will get posted tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Yes. Yeah. Because I found that certain tutors are not here anymore. The cheating in. That's what's up, guys. So, really? huh? Really? Because I saw such a difference in grade shifts. So you know the cheating in. Cheating meaning it wasn't directly done, but it was done that too much to be in college students when they were doing review sessions, like, don't do this, don't worry about that one. You're giving them the test. You can't give you the test. There's nothing wrong with making you understand what's going to be there and be aware of this. Because you're learning when I do that with you. But if we delineate stuff, then you don't look at the other stuff. So you don't want to do that with students. And then I want you to learn everything. We can't, we can't test everything. So you focus certain key points. That's how you put you know, a course together. But you know, if we just focus one thing and nothing else, you're going to come out of here and banana We're going to be a specialist in this one thing and know nothing else about the body. So we kind of can't do that. You do that when you go into your residency someday. That's different. You learned everything, now you like this one area, so you focus it. But we'll get back to this in the future. In the near future, like right now, when I slowly shift over, shift gears now. Let me make sure I'm done with this section. The heart's so weird, though, but this is how your heart starts. That's you when you were 20 years old, baby. Now, I have three. Yeah, then this is day 22. They start to like merge together and it's, you know, start to form like changes. Well, then explain and then day 24, we start to get a bench with one and eight year old. And it twists over itself. This is why it's not totally symmetrical like the box, the, you know, the hot shaped box of candy you get into. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah thanks, I totally forgot to say thank you for the and it's showing you here on day 28. And this is by day 35, so a little over a month. Here we go. And there's our foramen ovale. And we have our pain doctors, too. There's the doctor's arterio, so which we'll learn about shortly. We put foramen over. And so, we get a little lenient, but we forget to eat. Yes, I would be lenient with that. Yes, David, I will use you with that. So this is even an idea why the heart is so weird looking. But the key is, it's, it's just a pump. We're four rooms. That's all it is. But you guys like to look at the heart. I don't know if I this. Yes. <laughs> 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 
I'm rubbing all over the time. I'm rubbing off on me. I should have said, that sounded wrong too. Well, thank you. Right. So, yes, crap. I wouldn't just know when I say that. You know, and it's jumped up. Do this! I'm going to all sorts of So, I don't know, you're going to prove me, dude. So, the goal was this for this class. But the way we're moving, the goal is probably not going to happen. But the goal would be this. Um, that we would have finished primarily most of it by Friday. And that Wednesday would have been maybe hit any print that do, that do the study guide. So you'd have Friday off, you don't have to come in. Because you'd have time just to stay home and study. But the way it looks, we get to see what it might. We'll see how fast the pace goes when we get out of this. This is the last long lectures in this. The other lectures are short. So mainly the normal system, the way it runs, is arterial, capillary, vein. So we have a true closed circulatory system. So all three versus a open circulatory system, which is kind of like a lymphatic system. So an open system would happen. Did you feel like you should just use this? You'd have an artery, small arteries, but instead of capillaries, they go into like a Reservoir and then the venous thrust comes away from the reservoir. Kind of like your, uh, <coughs> your arthropod type animals, which would be like grasshoppers and things. That's the type of system they have. So, a little bit of biology for you. Open like that. Did you say that? Grasshopper. <laughs> no. So, of course, the pressure should be greater here than here. So, why do we always have so much arterial structure pushing into something? filtering, you need it. You need that volume shift to filter. So you need the arterial system stronger than the venous system, where in physiology, all of this would be this is 25 millimeters of energy, this is a 10. A distance of 15, so I can push whatever I have to in here, and then I can draw back this way to come back out now. Phosphosis and diffusion will take place. If this system starts losing itself, like in heart failure, where it starts dropping down to about 15, and this starts cooling, it starts rising itself. Now you can see how everything just washes back into the tissue area and doesn't go away. So there's formulas you can use to figure this out, which you will do in physiology. Would that be ascites when that happens? Yes, that would be ascites. He's ascites. <laughs> so, there you go. So first we'll get into the capital. The capillaries are known as the business end of the vascular system. The business end of the vascular system. What do we mean by that? Well, that's where most of the diffusion takes place. Right. That's where all your, all your exchange takes place. Oxygen for carbon dioxide, nutrition for waste, you know, so forth. You know, filtering, detoxifying. So depending on where I am as a capillary, that's what I'll do. Right, on the kidney, on the liver, the lungs muscles to push out the ATP, glucose stores, whatever. Depending on where I am is how I want to be. And if we look at this next, it shows you a capillary. The capillary itself is one cell layer thick. And what is the cell that makes up the wall of the capillary? Simple squamous epithelium. Why? Because it's keeping it closed, but stuff can go through it. It's designed for osmosis and diffusion. So we're just nothing but a big osmo pump, if you think about it. We're a bag of DNA with a big osmo pump moving everything around. That's all the human body is. The diameter of a capillary is the thickness of a red blood cell, which is in nanometers, don't worry about it. Which is like one year round, right? Yeah, even less. So, <laughs> <laughs> Cell, 
now I'm in the tissue. So, so I'm no more than two cells away from wherever I have to be. That's why travel waves are made this way. There's no more than two cells away. So one, two, here I am. One, two, now three. No three, one, two, not three. <laughs> not two cells thick. It's one cell thick. Okay, so that's the significance of it. So, you know, we see our red blood cells are nice round, biconcave. This. Why, why can you see now why a sickle shaped cell will cause problems in here? It gets stuck. Sickle cell in here. Yeah. And why did the body genetically do that? Because uh, it gives you an immune malaria, right? Exactly. And that's Prevents why it. after that, it's only really right. healthy. Right. right. That's why it's so big in the black population from Africa because. T-Boss has it. What? T-Boss. No. TSA. But he has the trait, not the full disease. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know what that was? Not even close. Tina and I are just like, oh, well, you know what they <laughs> So the three of us are exempt because we're, you know, we were born, you know, before 1969. <laughs>
So just remember what base of the storm, just you get asked. What is it? You know what it is now. Is it true that the base of the storm feeds the outer wall of the Vina Keys? I'm going to write it out. Is that a true statement I just said? Is that an anatomy? Vina Keys or anatomy? No. See how I treat? They didn't talk about this. I wasn't just waiting for the start of this class. So let's go to the veins. We look at the veins. Hey, veins. No matter if I'm the vena cava or the teeny vein, I only have two to three cell walls of smooth muscle in my middle layer. So in other words, I don't have the ability to contract and push blood. I can dilate. Veins can dilate much freer than an artery can because they got more stretchability to it. It's like when we're talking about the engorged jugulars, let me tell you, when you, when we used to bounce on a diet of heart failure, when you opened up in here to find the jugular, it was this big, you saw nothing else. The thing would be that swollen, taking up the whole neck on each side. And you'd have to be gentle lifting it so you don't break it. So you can make it suture first, then cut, and then put your canes and clamp. Then you go to the a -Rod. The aorta would be feel like a nice finishing root. If it was sclerotic, it snapped. And then it becomes a nightmare because now something that should have been quick becomes six to eight point in bonding, which could take two hours to do versus 30 minutes. So that sucks when it happens like two o'clock in the morning and you have to end. And you got a funeral, you got to be back at the funeral for like 6 30 for funeral, that's at eight. So you might have to sleep there. So you always keep a suit there and just stay here. There'd be many nights when you're sleeping on the couch in the back and the body's up in the front, dead in the casket. It's so freaking tired. <clears throat> and they don't get up and walk around. No. <clears throat> so we have, a, so because of this thin wall, veins rely on two things to move the blood a valve system and skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle will actually contract and squeeze the vein to push the blood forward, and as it travels to a certain point, it goes through the semilunar valve and it closes. And it keeps it from back, backing up, back down into your ankles. So when you get into the greater vessels, then the pressure of the heart can help suck it, bring it up, and the internal pressure moves in and so forth. But in the extremities, it's very dependent on skeletal muscle and its valve system. When the valve system fails, we end up with these pretty legs like this. Now oh, these are David's legs. That's <laughs> <out. laughs> this is David from the back with shorts on. <laughs> so now you know how he looks at the beach. Shit. <laughs> we got some nice varicosities. Women love these. How do you stop that from happening? I can't because it's genetic a lot of it. Because you know what's nice about veins? If I get rid of your greatest happiness, the other veins that are existing just reboot themselves to do the drainage they have to do. So this is why in the medicine you don't get into a lot of detail on the extremity vein venous system, because it doesn't run the same in any communities. One of the basic ones like the cervix, the fowl. But that's about it. Same thing again, greater saphness, lesser saphness. But that's as far as you go because anything below the pop they don't run the same. They all vary. And if, you, and if you remove one, others take over for that one. They literally reboot themselves on their own genetically. They do it. Arteries can't, but veins can. It becomes weird. Veins structure is a very weird structure. So these varicosities, why are they bad? Because we can end up with these <coughs> deep vein thrombosis. Because what happens to people that have these varicose veins, they get a lot of phlebitis or inflammation of the vein. And I had a student from uh, an afternoon section who had it. She had it the day of her practice. She showed me a leg. I said, Well, does that vein normally look like that all the time right here? She said, No. I said, I go right to the ER. And she did end up being. Deep vein thrombosis. You gotta have a lady surgery and take it out. So, in surgery, you got it out and then it turned out. I like to wrap on a lady now. 
she's back in class. So, deep vein thrombosis, what happens with blood? What happens to blood when you pull it together? Glass. Yeah, it agglutinates, right. It sticks to itself. So when you take an aspirin a day, you kind of break down that stickiness. When you put you on blood then as we stop pro-trauma to trauma information, that's different, so you bleed so much. But aspirin doesn't do that. Aspirin just stops the stickiness. So the blood, and it also keeps inflammation going. So the aspirin a day of 81 milligrams does help with this stuff. But what is bad about this, because see, this little piece in the side go and off it goes. And then you go to your heart, your lungs, or your brain. Stroke. Goes into the heart, and out. Goes into the lung, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary edema. Goes into the brain, you go into your own world after that. And then you leave. We'll stop with this, so we'll continue on.